Welcome back to the Wolverine.com podcast video edition. We've got Tom Crawford with us today. Tom Crawford was, in fact, in the house in uh, Michigan's dominant 87-70 victory over Michigan State last night, a game that the Wolverines just needed in a crucial fashion to get themselves off to a good start this week. Uh, Most experts say one more win to uh, put themselves in a very comfortable position for the NCAA. But, Tom, welcome back, and a uh, great night for you last night watching yeah. that one. Oh, that was uh, <laughs> that was sweet. That was sweeter than the Purdue game because Michigan-Michigan State is personal. We know that. It's a personal rivalry. And the fact that there was probably more Spartan fans in there since the Tommy Amaker era, I'm really thinking. I mean, I at, 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 at junctures in that game, JB, I felt like I was at uh, in Indy at the Big Ten tournament where you, or, or at United Center in Chicago where you had kind of that split crowd deal going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, But Hunter Dickinson, the Wolverines, uh, maybe that motivated them. I don't know, but they took over, and that was a huge, huge 40-minute win for the Wolverines over at Michigan State. Yeah, and in not as great, a uh, as you mentioned, a home setting as you might normally expect. Spring break for Michigan. You've got COVID restrictions on what fans can attend. So you did have a, a pretty good influx of uh, green and white in there. Uh, and they made a lot of noise early, but they got quieted down, uh, especially by the big man, Hunter Dickinson, 33 points, nine rebounds, and... Um, a few words for the Michigan State bench along the way. <laughs> yeah, uh, talked about that a lot in the in the post game presser. I mean, I I I felt that you know Hunter was playing Maryland again. You know what I mean? He has that personal mm-hmm. thing going on with Maryland, and I don't know what happened in East Lansing, and I don't really didn't really get to the bottom of what motivated, but he was doing the glare uh, at Michigan State's bench. And, and Phil Martelli after the game said, you know, that's not his style. But the thing, what I think what worked with Hunter doing that, he sent a message to his teammates, and Martelli talked about this, that this was a, this was a special game. This, this was a needed game. And obviously it's personal being Michigan State. And Phil Martelli, uh, uh, the, the thing that stood out more in the postgame than anything is that he walked down the tunnel around 4.30. And he said he looked in the eyes of his players and he knew this was going to be a good night. You know, it's like they had that look. And I think Hunter Dickinson had that look more than anybody. And, and we saw that, that that reverse dunk. I'm trying to think midway through the second. Well, that place was rocking. That was a big time play. There was some point in that game when maybe it was that he was realizing he wasn't getting doubled or at least doubled the way Tom Izzo wanted it to happen but that they could not check him with one man, and uh, he just started to go crazy. And I think, for me, I, I, I think that uh, getting jazzed up and doing the stairs and, uh, you know, maybe throwing a little uh, Bill Lamb beer into the whole thing is, is part of uh, what gets Hunter Dickinson going on his own. You know, you don't want to overdo that stuff, but he was one fired-up guy. And one of the things he said afterwards was uh, Coach Izzo had a whole lot of nice things to say about me uh, up in East Lansing after that game. And they asked him, well, what, what did he say to you after this one? And uh, not a word, not a word. They, he, he said, now he did say, Izzo's a man of his word. He was talking about the importance of the, uh, the handshake line, and he went through it. But you could tell that was just a blow by at the end. Yeah, and and you know that and that goes back to what happened. I mean, you, I could, I could see. I was watching Tom Izzo a lot during the game. Um, uh, he was upset about it. He claimed he he complained to the officials, and the officials uh, conveyed to Martelli and to, and to Hunter, you know, to back it down. And he and he back. I mean, Hunter didn't deny that he that he that he got a little salty in this game. I mean, he didn't. But um, you know, it's something that that maybe this Michigan team needed. I don't personally like it either myself. Um, I, you know, like Michigan State fans were taunting the Michigan uh, basketball team during the player introductions, they're chanting NIT. So you're on the road and you're taunting the home team with NIT chants before the game starts. That's where this rivalry 
has gotten into the uh, you know not so friendly mode. It's uh, it's it's at a different level, John. I, I've I've sincerely believed that for the last couple of years, and that's that's Mark D'Antonio, uh, that's football, that's Mel Tucker now, that's basketball. Um, that's just the way it is. So I guess that's the way it's going to be. So let's just carry on. Yeah, I, I I understand it is Michigan, Michigan State. I don't know about the last couple of years as much there because uh, if if we brought uh, Steve Everett and uh, any of the Fab Five into the discussion, they might t- say that it was just as heated in the early 90s as it is right now. I think it's been a while. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, you've got social media, you've well, got, there you go. That's the difference. It's been, it's been elevated. You just nailed it, John. I mean, it's been, it's, it's exposed. It's with video clips. It's Draymond Green doing posts on social media, uh, players far removed. Um, and that's just, that's the difference. It's you're, you're right. It was probably already there, but it's been intensified with social media. If you want to, uh, continue the list of, uh, of, of Tom Izzo complaints about this game. Uh, one certainly was uh, Terrence Williams knocking down, going three for three from three point range. Whereas he'd had uh, what? Six, uh, six, three pointers in the big 10 uh, really stepping up and doing a, uh, a big job stepping in. And you look at a freshman point guard when, uh, when your starter gets in foul trouble, coming in to, uh, you know, you're not, he wasn't scoring points, but boy, he was, uh, he was very active and delivering the basketball and including some great, great feeds to uh, Hunter Dickinson. Yeah. You know, uh, T. Will was, was tremendous. And, and with Terrence Williams, I mean, it goes back to that box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get with T. Will. So, I mean, sometimes he, he, like Indiana game, he was terrific. And then sometimes he's not so good. And that's it. That's a freshman thing. And but but Frankie Collins, what he did when Devontae got his second foul, in comes Frankie Collins. Uh, Michigan State's dribble drive penetration like stopped abruptly. Um, I mean, I thought that was hugely impactful. Uh, and, and and yet I saw that he did his job in that regard. Uh, Devontae, you know, I saw very few minutes in the second half. Uh, but in comes Devontae, fresh, two fouls, and and he obviously contributed a lot offensively. And 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 you know, Devontae's. He's got it cooking right now, as does Caleb Houston. Now we're getting finally, finally, that consistent play. I mean, Caleb's had, uh, I think, three or four uh, double-figure outputs, uh, and that's what we're expecting early on. And you can see, you can see the confidence on the floor. Um, with even not just you know catch and shoot or anything like that, but he had some dribble. He had a couple, he had a couple dribble drives that were pretty impressive. So. A lot of good things. They're getting better. And I'm going to go back to that Illinois game for a second, John. We haven't talked about it. I don't think Michigan played that bad against Illinois. I think Illinois was just an absolute juggernaut on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, Illinois is very, very good. I think they're the best team in the Big Ten. Yeah, they are the best team. There's no question. They're, they're not there. Wisconsin has already gotten a share of it uh, some way, somehow, through this whole fight. But, uh, but you're right. Illinois, an extremely talented team. Uh, and – you know, Michigan just doesn't match up all that well with them. All they've they've given them a couple of good fights and and been in those games down the stretch before Illinois pulled away. Uh, you noted Caleb Houston, third straight game, double figures, 21, 21, 16 last night. He's starting to pick it up. I'll tell you what, with Frankie Collins that you mentioned, um, I sure hope that this kid just absolutely lives in the gym. Uh, all off season, he still got this the rest of this year to contribute. But I'm telling you, I, I'm not sure how someone uh, gets as adept in several parts of the game as he has over the course of 18 years or so, and and just doesn't shoot the basketball very well. I'm I'm uh, I at times I wonder if he could uh, hit a hit a cow from a yard out with a shotgun, but the. I mean, he is so impactful in other ways. Uh, yeah. The way he gets up and down the floor, the way he can deliver the basketball. You mentioned his defense. I just want to, you know, you know, you really need to see him uh, be able to come up with a, a consistent jump shot, and and even at the free throw line, 
it looked like um, it's almost a careless, hurry, hurried release. Uh, and I just hope that uh, however it happens over the offseason, he, he makes some big strides in that area. Yeah, when I've talked about I've talked to a, a number of players, uh, you know, uh, you know about Frankie Collins and can can his shot be, you know, talked to Devonta, can his shot be fixed or anything? Is it, now, and it, it, there's seemingly no worry about it. I mean, this kind of it's like a little Xavier Simpson going on here, you know, doing a lot of good things at point guard. Phil Martelli was not happy with those missed free throws. In fact, he basically declared in the post game presser that uh, Frankie's going to be in that, you know, he's going to be jacking up a lot of free throws. He was not happy. I, he says, I can't have my point guard, uh, miss, you know, uh, you know, two shot foul and clank both of them. And especially when a closeout time, uh, this game didn't require closeout time. Uh, but in the future, like next year, he he's going to be the guy. He's going to have to hit free throws. And um, it, you know, it's, uh, there was a guy that played at Michigan State named Eric Snow who couldn't hit free throws. They couldn't shoot at all. And all of a sudden, he fixed it and played in the NBA a while. Uh, maybe Frankie can be an Eric Snow kind of guy. I, You know, I, I it, it could be there. I really like this kid. I have liked this kid from day one. A ton of energy. He's loose. He's dancing over there on the sideline. Even when State was coming back, got it down to 12. I looked over at the bench trying to see if there's anybody, you know, getting tight. He was out there dancing to the to the timeout music. So this kid's special. I really think that. Well, he if he makes the Eric Snow turnaround shooting wise, then I will start to bring back the Ricky Green mentions. I I, okay. I put it on the shelf for now because you know I, that would be an insult to to Ricky Green's ability to shoot the basketball. But I see those flashes as he as he moves up and down the court, and I you know. I, I only saw Ricky Green as a junior and senior, obviously, because he transferred in. So uh, this young man has got time to grow, and, I, and I, it'll be interesting and exciting to see that happen. Uh, amazing that we've gotten this far into a podcast about Michigan, Michigan State. Haven't talked about Eli Brooks, but he kind of had a quiet game, and, uh, you know, uh, Izzo said the same thing afterwards. Um it's it's good that you can have a dominant win like that and not have to have uh, some kind of a a double double game out of of Eli Brooks. But I think uh, he has been getting healthier in some ways, and uh, you know will be certainly uh, needed as they all will to pull together and have the same kind of effort uh, on Thursday night against Iowa. Yeah, you know, it's it's like Eli's now had two. I mean, uh, I guess Illinois he only had four points he, he, in, 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 you know, 30 plus minutes. And it was, I mean, it's not like he did anything bad, um, but, you know, he's he's a little out of sorts. But I tell you what, when that depth, and I'm looking over there at the bench early on, and, and all, all, they've already gone uh, eight or nine deep. I mean, Michigan potentially could be considered by the end of this thing, they could be a, a, quality, a quality deep team. Um, before the season is over with, if it's it's trending in that direction, that they're getting better contribution. I thought Brandon Johns, you know, he didn't play a lot of minutes, playing the hometown team, but he got five points. He had a big three, and he yeah. didn't hesitate with that three. This is the Brandon Johns I saw at East Lansing High School, where his his feet were under him, his shoulders, you know, he's square to the and and he did not hesitate. And that shot he hit was a big one. That was a big shot at the time. I think. Uh, I took it up to 10 at the, that was early on in the game. And, and so, I mean, if you get these little nuggets of contribution from, from, from guys that, you know, might not normally have it. Um, I mean, if someone comes up each game and maybe Kobe Bufkin will, will have a great game at Iowa with Iowa, like he did the, the game in Iowa city, maybe that's a good match for him. I don't know, but you're going to need these contributions. Uh, all these games back to back, you know, playing three games in uh, five days, you got the big 10 tournament coming up. Potentially, hopefully, in uh, the NCAA tournament. So you're going to need depth. Well, you mentioned the NCAA tournament. Most experts looking in say Michigan needs to get that 11th win in the Big Ten regular season to feel good about themselves going into selection time. Now, you don't want to have a bad loss in the first round of the of the Big Ten tournament. But uh, my question to you is, can Michigan – summon up the same sort of effort it had against Michigan State, maybe the same sort of emotion in uh, in attempting to take down the Iowa Hawkeyes, 
who they beat on the road, and uh, they need that effort tomorrow night to uh, to get that 11th win. Boy, if you look at the pattern of the Big Ten, I mean, every 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 team is uh, on again, off again. Every every team is a box of chocolates when you really think about it. I mean, look at Ohio State, man. They thought they were going to win a share of the Big Ten crown less than a week ago, and they dropped back to back. They get blow, they get rolled by Maryland in college part. Then they come home to Columbus, and they let the worst team in the Big Ten. So you don't assume anything. It's uh, it's going to be a, probably an hour practice again. You know, more film work today. I think they're going to reach down. I think, I think momentum in a positive way is going to offset fatigue, um, and and um, I, I think they're going to manage to beat Iowa. I think it's going to be tough, and then who knows? In in Columbus, I mean Ohio State. I mean Ohio State's got Michigan State uh, tomorrow night. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in that game? They're both coming off a loss. I, I I'm done trying to predict what's going to happen. But you're right. They need to get 11 wins. I I wanted 12 uh, four weeks ago to go to Indy uh, all nice and cozy and comfy. Uh, and that's, that's still a, a daunting task. So to win down in Columbus. So we've talked a lot of about a lot of aspects of this Michigan team. Give me a couple that uh, stand out to you most that could help this team be the most productive. It can be in finishing out the regular season, going into the big 10 tournament, going into the NCAA tournament, what are the must-haves for this team to be able to do? Well, I'm I'm going to go back to Eli Brooks' discussion because uh, we can't have these uh, two games where he's – I'm not saying totally irrelevant, but, I mean, he's, he's going to have to have a more prominent role. He's a, he's a leader on that team. He's a great communicator on that team. And so he's going to have to – He's going to have to step up, if you will. Uh, that's that's for sure. And then Hunter, this guy's just got to keep being Hunter. And he that fire that he had. I mean, we they talked about Phil talked about on this past weekend that on Saturday and Sunday, uh, and he was really never disclosed that Hunter was just like out of sorts. He just seemed, you know, not vibrant or something like to the point that Phil says, "Are you all right?" Kind of deal. Uh, he's got to be. We got to get Hunter Dickinson. Uh, the, the 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 Tuesday night version against Michigan State. This from this point forward, like every game. I mean, this is it. This is uh, you know, it's it's they're they're running out of time uh, to 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 uh, remedy the resume, if you will. And, and he mentioned that last night. And so he's got a those two guys. Those are the leaders. Let's be real. Um, Eli Brooks and Hunter Dickinson, and they're going to have to deliver, in my opinion, every game. All right, we'll keep an eye on those two things and everything else down uh, the stretch of this season. Iowa tomorrow night and Ohio State over the weekend. And then next week, all of a sudden, you're thrown right into the Big Ten tournament. We'll be talking about it all with Tom Crawford, our man in East Lansing. Tom, thanks so much for being with us, and uh, we shall talk again soon. Always a pleasure, JB. It's an honor to be on the Wolverine Podcast. Until next time.